So if you've ever tried something and failed, what is someone likely to tell you? Focus. Focus on the task at hand. Focus on school, sports, getting into college. Focus on your future. But with all this talk of focus, we may equate focusing on something as a way to succeed in it. But is this true? Well, it makes sense logically, of course. If you spend more time and effort doing something, then you should be better at it, right? Well, Albert Einstein once, Albert Einstein once said, it's not that I'm smarter. It's just that I stay with the problems longer. Or in other words, he focused on it more. But I only believe half of this to be true because Albert Einstein was a genius. If a regular person stuck with an Albert Einstein problem, would they be able to solve it? It's food for thought. Now, you may have heard of a man named Malcolm Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell wanted to study expertise. He wanted to know specifically how long it took to become an expert at something, a master. In order to do this, he studied scientists, athletes, people at the top of their fields, and what it took to get where they are today, their habits and their behaviors. He came to the conclusion it takes 10,000 hours of focused practice at a specific skill to become a master. Now, 10,000 hours is quite an intangible number. We don't really run into it that much, so let's put it into context. Say I wanted to become a master of a golf swing. So I decide, OK, every day I'm going to come home. For an hour a day, I'm going to practice my golf swing. Now, if I did that every day, do you, think, do you know how long it would take to become an expert? It would take almost three decades, 27 years, before I reached that 10,000 hour goal. That's a long time. So what if I up the ante and say, OK, I'm going to spend four hours a day practicing my golf swing. It would still take about a decade, approximately seven years, before I became an expert. Now, you may say to me, OK, but I don't need to become an expert at everything, right? I don't need to become an expert at math to solve an equation or English to write a paper. I just need to do it now and get it over with. And that's understandable. So maybe the answer is not to spend 10,000 hours doing something, but maybe take a break from focus. Let me paint you a picture. A scientist working in a lab all winter long on his experiments, whatever he has to do. Summer finally rolls around and he decides, you know what? I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go on vacation. So he does. He joins his family and goes on a vacation. He doesn't even clean up his lab before he leaves. Now, before I finish, do you think he would have made a contribution at all? Would he have helped science progress in any way? Or would you call him a slacker or lazy for not focusing or taking a break? Well, when he came back, what he found out was that he, what he failed to clean up actually turned into the thing that has saved millions of lives since 1928 and is the cure to countless bacterial infections. The stuff in the sink turned out to be penicillin. And that scientist was Dr. Alexander Fleming. Now, not to go too far into hypotheticals, but what would have happened had he just focused harder and not taken that break? Would we have had penicillin? Maybe. But in that time, how many more lives would have been lost? Now, let's look at the company which has become so big, we use its name as a verb, Google. Now, you may have heard stories of what it's like to work at Google, or you could have just watched the movie The Internship like I did. But Google has this insane campus, as you can see. You can ride bikes around, you get free food, you can take naps during the day. It's amazing. But with a company so innovative, you would figure that they would have their employees working hard 24-7 at the project that they have them assigned. But the exact opposite is true. Google employees actually spend 20% of their time, approximately one day out of the average five-day work week, working on projects that they're passionate about, not what Google assigns them. Now, you may find this to be counterintuitive. Well, how would they become more productive? By producing less, it seems like. In fact, some of Google's biggest projects have come out of this 20% time that employees spend. For example, Gmail, a service that probably the entire audience uses, came out of an employee's break time. We talked about the future, we talked about innovation, technology, and Google. Let's go back to the past. 
15th century Italy. There was a man, a philosopher, inventor, scientist, and a painter. His name was Leonardo da Vinci. And nowadays we call him a Renaissance man. But what if he had decided to focus on one field rather than all of them? And remember, he didn't just dabble in this field, in these fields. He didn't just like finger paint on the weekends. He excelled in these fields and led them to become what they are today. But say Da Vinci had said, nah, I'm just gonna stick to science. Would we've had the Mona Lisa, one of the most famous and recognizable, pa recognizable paintings around the world? Maybe not. And you don't have to be a Renaissance man to take a break from focus and apply this attitude to your life. Take me, for example. I would consider myself a typical high school. I go to school, because it's legally required. I play sports, I participate in clubs, and I do extracurricular activities. When we focus on something 24-7, we lose out on opportunities in our life. It's of course great to have a passion, and a lot of TED Talks have spoken about how having a passion can drive you in your life. But it's also ha important to have a range of interests that will supplement your passion. For example, playing multiple sports can help you on in areas that that main sport might not help you. And this is applied to Fleming and Google as well. Obviously with Gmail, that supplemented Google's work. What we create for ourselves is tunnel vision when we focus too hard. We see a problem, and that's all we see. This is applies to all students. If you're ever stuck on a problem, teachers tell you to move on. Why is that? It's because something on the side can help you with the problem you're trying to attack now. This works with more larger problems in life as well. While we're so stuck on focusing on the thing ahead of us, the solution to our problem may lie in our periphery, on the side. How are we going to achieve all we want when we spend 10,000 hours on one thing? Sure, we may become an expert at it, but will it lead to a well-balanced and healthy life? That's why I'd like to challenge Dr. Malcolm Gladwell. Now, if you're still confused or you don't buy what I'm saying, and you're like, no, I'm going to study harder for that test, you should, because I'm not telling you not to work hard. Hard work is a stepping stone to success. I'm not telling you to procrastinate, as you learned. But let me put it to you this way. Imagine you're driving a car, but instead of a windshield in front of you, you just have one square foot of glass. Not only are you likely to have an accident, but you're going to miss all the beautiful scenery lines that will pass you by. Think about that the next time someone tells you.